In my journey through Taoism as it stands so far, I have noticed a few things about Taoism. One of the first things is how obscure it is for most people. For whatever reason, Taoism seems to have a relatively small following, even when compared with other Eastern philosophies such as Buddhism. This intrigues me because my journey through Taoism has been extremely rewarding and I often wonder how it is regarded by other people. Since this topic has been on my mind a lot lately, it seemed to me that it deserved a video all to itself. So without further ado, I present to you my perspective on why most people will not become Taoist. As we attempt to dissect this topic of why more people do not choose to follow Taoism, we will steer away from obvious and general answers such as never having heard of it. While these are obviously extremely relevant factors, we will define the scope of this video to accommodate answers of a more humanistic nature. While certainly many people have not heard of Taoism, in this video we are more concerned with why someone who has heard of Taoism, and may even possess a rudimentary understanding of its teachings, might choose to reject them. I think one of the more obvious reasons of this nature for Taoism's relatively small following is simple. It forces us to acknowledge that we don't have everything together. Most of us are far too concerned with trying to convince other people that we have everything together to try to address why we actually don't. Taoism, as with any other avenue of self-improvement, shows us where we need to improve. It invites us to change not only our behavior, but our entire outlook on life. This is usually a rather uncomfortable process, and therefore most people want nothing to do with it. In the popular TV show Avatar The Last Airbender, the hero Aang and his friends find an ancient library hidden in a vast desert, where they hope to find clues that will help them to defeat the main villain, Fire Lord Ozai. Upon arrival, they discover that the library is guarded by the spirit Wan Chi Thong, when they request access to the library, Wan Chi Thong initially forbids them. He informs them that humans are no longer permitted inside his library, as sad experience has taught him that humans only seek knowledge to gain advantage over other humans. When he later discovers that was the explicit reason for Aang's arrival, he is outraged and decides to bury his library beneath the desert sands forever, so that the knowledge inside can never again be abused. Though Wan Chi Tong's attack on Aang and his friends may be a bit extreme, he does have a point. The unfortunate truth is that we as human beings rarely seek knowledge for knowledge's sake. We are instead far too concerned with being better competitors for the things upon which we place value, such as money, power, or fame. Sadly, the case is as much the same in the realm of self-improvement and mindfulness. Most people are only interested in changing themselves as much as is required to make more money, to be more liked, or attract better mates. Thus, we see endless programs such as meditation to increase job performance, or mindfulness to improve cognition. Even worse, many people hope to achieve these ends without having to change at all. We have come to see knowledge as something to be used to get what we want, and then to be cast aside when we are finished with it. Taoism is a road that largely rewards those who are sincerely interested in changing their life, and consequently, many gloss it over. We as people generally are extremely adverse to the idea of letting go of what we want. And why wouldn't we be? We learn to desire almost from infancy. For better or for worse, the great machine that is our modern capitalistic society is driven by desire and consumption, and extracting oneself from the philosophies and nuances of the culture one lives in can be extremely difficult. Not only are we seemingly born with our natural human desires for importance, meaning, and material security, but we are taught on every turn that aspiration maketh a man, and a person is legitimized by little more than his own skills and hard work. The philosophy of hustle is a tricky one indeed, because if a person who is trying to hustle does not feel that he or she is getting what they want out of life, they are usually led to believe it is because they have not hustled hard enough and need to hustle harder. Often we look around at what others have and feel worthless if we are not able to get the things that we want, or that we think we ought to want. Taoism invites us to change our perspective on what is really important in life and what will truly make us happy. 
Doing this frees us from much of the unnecessary pressures we experience in life and allows us to enjoy the things that matter most. Of course, personalities and circumstances differ across different people, and so there are many potential answers to questions like these. But these are three major reasons why I think people tend to shy away from Taoism, and even self-improvement in general. If you find yourself described by one or more of these, as do I, I recommend taking some time to self-reflect. Think about why you feel the way you do, and where you might have learned to think this way. Even if you don't feel like changing anything right now, getting understanding, or at least looking for it, is a good first step if you're looking to change.